This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Okay, so your doubt is about the significance of that planning area. Yes. Okay, so as I told that, you know, uh, yesterday we have uh, seen this uh, application called a sample model entities. So there SAP has listed all the standard planning areas. There are seven, I think. Every planning area is meant for a particular module. So the use is that, for example, if some client, you know, if he wants to implement only control tower piece, so in that case, you know, he don't have to worry about the other demand planning things and supply planning things and etc. etc. So he can just copy the control tower planning area and then create um, his own version of the planning area. And then he can utilize the, the, the futures that are available in that particular control tower planning area. The futures, like as you said, the KPIs, the key figures that were already written by SAP as for the standard best practices and uh, uh, a sample dashboards, everything, all, all that sample set is already there so that the, you know, the team can reuse uh, those functionalities and can continue with their implementation. But um, as, as I told that we should actually copy the SAP IBP one planning area that is called unified planning area because you never know uh, you know maybe today you might you want to implement control tower and then do all the reporting stuff inside IBP maybe write uh, you know uh, too many interfaces and bring data from too many places back into IBP so that you have this beautiful uh, reporting features and functionalities right in IBP I mean, we can create very, very fancy charts and uh, they are, you know, uh, are so customizable and then, uh, you know, you have this drill down futures and other functionalities. So, uh, you know, you can just implement control tower and bring data points from like, you know, uh, S4 system or, you know, or APO system or ERP system. You can do all that. But eventually you wanted to do more inside IBP. Right. So if you want to do more in IVP, like let's say you want to also do demand planning activity inside IVP. So in that case, if you just stick to the controlled or planning area, then you cannot actually do the forecasting and other stuff. So if we start with the IBP one planning area, which is a unified planning area, that means it unifies all the functionalities that are available inside IBP, except the order based planning you know, that is still evolving. So apart from that, SAP IBP one has everything so you know you can just call, take a copy of IBP one and then maybe start with the control tower functionalities eventually when the requirement is coming for demand planning also and you can also start building your demand planning things inside the, the copy of IBP one thank you sure and whether actually for me the chart option is not enabled. Uh, which chart option you're talking about? Maybe just check with your user permissions and also I'm just sharing my screen. Let me know what you're referring to. I'm referring to that meeting invite only, not referring to IBP. No, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, you're saying chart options. You mean to say this analytics advanced mm -hmm. is not attached to you actually in a go to meeting we are having the chart window right oh okay I'm so, yeah i'm sorry, sorry. Uh, uh not sure man I, I don't know maybe i have to check with <clears throat> anji or maybe um maybe harmit but anyway just uh, shoot out any any question you have just let me know we, we can talk yes yeah, sure it might have been collapsed and uh, like you know you, you might see the are you saying you know, in the top icon, uh, go to meeting icon. Mm -hmm. No, no, uh, I'm talking Sri. I'm asking about Shri. Okay, okay, Sri. Okay. Yeah, so then the, the okay. icon is not showing. Okay. I think maybe like, you know, put an escape and it may be in a full screen mode or something like that. You know, try to one time escape and see if that helps. Okay. Yeah, I will try that one. And when the decision start the session, no problem.
Yeah, I'm sharing my screen, guys. So let me know when you can see it. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Great. So just a small uh, recap, guys, on yesterday what we have seen. Um, so yesterday we started uh, getting a uh, deep inside key figures, and there are lots of key figures that are available, uh, different types of key figures. So we have uh, seen a helper key figure. Uh, we have configured a helper key figure, and then we have seen the functionalities of helper key figure that it is not visible on the Excel UI or in the analytics or in the alerts or like in web UI, I mean to say. And uh, because the values are not saved in the database because it is just an auxiliary kind of a key figure, it is meant to do the intermediate calculations and uh, use it across your planning area, you know, key figure calculations. So we have seen that and then we have also seen an alert key figure um, and then we have seen a, a, a snapshot a key figure and snapshot key figure we won't create a, a, an explicit snapshot key figure but it is the operator that automatically creates a snapshot key figure so if you want to take six snapshots on a source key figure system will create six different snapshots key figures automatically so at max what we can do is we can go and change the name of the snapshot key figure because system automatically creates a name also for it based on the kind of a config that we gave so uh, if you remember we have given something like a suffix and uh, uh, etc so system auto populates based on that so uh, we need to create an operator and uh, and then uh, you know activate your planning area uh, and then start running your snapshot operators you need to take a you need to run an operator then that operator captures the source key figure values and creates a snap of it in the key figures and uh, and we have also seen that you know the uh, if, if we go along taking um, you know uh, more snapshots if we create six snapshots uh, the most recent snapshot would always stay on the top that is the snapshot one and then there's also another thing called as a redo snapshot so if if you take that it will you know uh, do that snapshot thing again so instead of pushing it like for example you have taken three snapshots snapshot one two three and next time you take another snapshot what system does the system takes system creates another snapshot four and which we don't want because uh, you know we are not done with the actual planning and uh, maybe accidentally we have run a snapshot we wanted to redo it then in that case if you run a redo snapshot then the count will be the same that is snapshot one two three but the snapshot one values will be updated back with the most recent values and what we have seen uh, and then we have seen some uh, config related stuff um, how to restore uh, an active instance of a planning area this will come in handy when we uh, create something and it is causing a lot of issues then you know we uh, we restore our active version and let the planning area active so that others can do their planning or configuration etc and you go back to your dev planning area and then do the changes there once you had get a robust fix then come back to the golden config and do your changes there so it is important to keep the planning area status as active we have also seen how to delete uh, an active key figure so and then we have also seen the various statuses that a key figure can possess first it will start with an active once you successfully activate it, it becomes active. Then if you want to delete it, then you have to, you know, um, um, you know, may, uh, there's, just like, there's like a two-step process. First, you need to mark it for delete and then click on delete. Then the status changes to pending for deletion and then uh, entire thing gets grayed out so that we'll know that this key figure is about to get deleted. And then you activate it and then this would be gone. Okay, so these are the stuff that we have seen. So today we'll, We'll also go deep. Uh, so today we'll see something called as an attribute transformation. Uh, this is also a powerful concept, and based on the requirement, you know, uh, we'll use this. So what is this attribute transformation? So the, the name itself is saying, right? I mean, if 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 we clearly follow it, an attribute 
we transform we transform an attribute value so change the value of an attribute based on a calculated expression so what are the attributes attributes are like you know everything in the planning area almost like you know even the time profile uh, levels are also an attribute product master data it has a lot of attributes and then you know there are attributes everywhere so we can pick an attribute and then we can transform the attribute and can you know uh, uh, we can change the values the way we want based on the the conditions based on the calculation that we write so usually they come in handy when uh, when something things like product substitution there's also a robust future called product uh, substitution but you know if 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 you just want to use it for a particular key figures then you know um, product we can use the attribute transformation realignment again we have the realignment but still um, this concept can be used to realign locally for a particular key figure so location shutdown uh, year on year comparison etc so what is this location shutdown so if i say that um, So let's say we have some key figure values. Sorry, uh, let's say there are some uh, key figure values like for stock transfer. And uh, that is for a location called SWDC, Southwest DC. And there, there are values for this key figure, like for example, let's say for four years. So we are, we had gone live and then uh, we are using this key figure called stock transfer. This is storing, uh, you know, uh, a lot of data inside this key figure for this location called SWDC. So what if, uh, you know, um, this uh, Southwest DC is getting shut down? then we're coming up with something like uh, nwdc northwest dc so in that case what we want to do is we want to transform the value of the southwest dc but still want to retain these values like this 100 100 100 across uh, uh, but we want to you know uh, transform this value and then just want to see the same data in another key figure for a value called northwest dc so in that case so we need to create, you know, something like uh, stock transfer 2.0 or something updated, give a new name and use an attribute transformation and then uh, we can get in like this. And also think of the year on year comparison. So now I'm talking from a more from a periodic transformation. So for example, there are uh, there is this demand key figures consensus demand um, for the current month. But what if the planner also wants to see what was the exact demand in the last year, the same month, and I want to see them on the on the same time bucket. Uh, so for example, um, So for example, let's say we are in uh, we are in this week, week three and week four we are. This is our current week, and then these are the previous weeks. So if if there is a requirement that you know um, it was offset by two periods, then I, I want to see, I want to you know push this to like this. 
so now i can compare in the week three bucket i can see uh, what was my actual uh, demand and what was like last year or maybe you know the previous uh, bucket value it could be like last month or or last quarter or based on the way that we write the key figure calculation i mean uh, based on the way we write the attribute transformation so i can compare both the you know values on the same time bucket uh, for the same customer combination in a two different key figures so one is offset key figure another is a, an actual key figure so in that way we can do an year on year comparison or those kind of uh, you know things like you know i i, I just transform the la last year's values and bring it on to the current year um, and then i can compare it with my original values and then the last year values on the same bucket otherwise you remember like i mean if if, if you can recall how we do it so we have to create two different views and one view actually holds the historical data like for example uh, may 14 2018 and then there is another sheet which shows uh, 2019 may uh, 14 and then you know it, it's, it's really hard uh, to actually you know compare and then how the values are evolving or how the values are changing but with attribute transformations you know we can uh, uh, actually uh, do this transformation and compare it so now let's come back to the to, to our ex examples that we're talking about um, so there is this key figure called as a final available capacity right so which is uh, basically the result after some planning exercise that we do so i will write an attribute transformation for this key figure final available capacity and bring uh, the last year values onto uh, you know uh, i'll transform the last year values so that i'll bring them onto the same time bucket so that i can compare them you know uh, like side by side and i can see how the maintenance activities are going on okay so i'll i'll do that so so there is this procedure that we have to follow it's a four step procedure and then now then i'll actually go into uh, do the the real config so first we need to create another new planning level that is uh, from pl1 just generalizing it so that you guys can reuse it across first copy planning level pl1 to a new planning level pl2 offset so why i am copying the source planning level to another planning level so for example uh, in here we have the final available capacity is at location and resource so now i am copying the location resource and i'm creating a new planning level so why i am doing a copy of it so because while i transform the values from last year and bring it on to the new uh, current year in a different key figure then the different key figure also should hold the values at a particular level so that new key figure also needs a new planning level for example let me just take off this so this is a key figure i'll create a new key figure that is called last year planned availability so this year you're saying 118 is the available 50 is available 168 is available but last year in the same week one of 2018 what was your plan and then uh, what, what is the difference etc so so this is a key figure that holds the transformed values and now this key figure also needs a planning level and then this will not be the same as the source key for planning level this would be something else but everything remains the same just creating a copy of it just duplicating it so that this key figure can have its own planning level so that's the first thing that we're going to do and then next we verify the source key figure that is the final available capacity third what we do is we create a target key figure that is the last year planned availability so this is the target key figure so this is where we're going to transform the values and store the values so so i think i should get into the system and then you know walk you guys side by side instead of this I'm getting into the system
So, um, where is that Z main key figures that we are doing on? Yeah, this is the one. Z maintenance final available. This is a final available capacity. This is at a weak resource location. So what's the first step? Uh, um, we have to create, we have to copy the planning level and create a new planning level that is PL2 offset. So I'll create a new planning level and uh, take a copy of this weak resource location. I'll just give a different name. Uh, I'll just call it as a uh, offset, offset planning level so that, yeah. So first I'll go to the source key figure that is weak resource location. So this was planned at um, at a weak location and resource. Now I'll take a copy of it. So this is a button that we need to press. So copy. Now copy from weak resource location, user content to the create new. I'll say uh, weak resource location offset. Why, why, why offset, ear on ear offset. It's the same, entire thing is, you know, it's the same, but just I created a new planning level so that I can, uh, you know, the transformed values can be saved at this planning level. Now step two, what is the step two? Uh, step two is verify the source key figure. Fine, I have the source key figure. This is a key figure that I want to transform the values by an year. Third, what is the third one? Mm. Creating a target key figure by copying the source key figure. Again, uh, so I'm taking a copy of this and then creating, so copy from Z maintenance final available, what is the new? So I'll say the new would be uh, Z, mm. start with the same name last year um, final so what is the name that we thought of last year planned availability great so it just copied the same okay now I'll give last year final availability. Okay, and now guys, I mean, we don't need this calculation because, you know, we are not doing any uh, uh, subtraction, like what is a standard capacity and then what is a planned consumption. The difference is our final available. So we don't have to do that. So we just have to pick up, pick the source key figure and then just do the transformation, right? We, because we're not doing any, any, uh, any new calculations and doing, uh, giving it, displaying any new results here. So, right. So if we come back to the slides here, so it is saying the first step is create the target key figure by copying the source key figure. Switch it to a calculated key figure. So yes, now this key figure is a calculated one. It's already calculated, it's fine. So um, why calculated? Because we are calculating uh, based on, uh, uh, you know, a transformation, right? That's why it has to be a calculated one. Next, define the calculation at base planning level to, to source key figure. So, so in here, let me first delete this. Do we need yes. to change the planning area because we created a new planning area, right? 
uh, no sir i think you're getting confused with the planning area and planning level so we created a new planning level itself so in here see this planning yeah. level no no for this key figure we need to change that uh, you know, planning uh, level right uh, yes yes just the planning level. resource location huh but yes down, uh, yeah. Oh, you're that saying we have to change, change this right also? Yes. Oh, you, you're talking about from this key figure? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, no, we will not change. Uh, I, I'll, we will we'll reach there. I'll, I'll tell it to you, like, why we okay. won't change. So now, first, I need to write the, I said it is a calculated one. Last year, final availability, it's a calculated. You know, there is no stored values. System do always a calculation and then display me the values. So what is the calculation? So you just pick the, Pick the standard final availability that is standard maintenance final. So this is my calculation. So my last year final availability is always the maintenance final availability. So if I come here, so so this last year final availability is the same as final available capacity, but a transformed value. So now here comes a picture. So where we specify that this is getting transformed. So I'm telling to the system that when you are requesting the data, when you are displaying the data, do the transformation and display it. So the transformed values would be in this planning level. So it is saying that, uh, you know, th th there is no calculation or nothing for this key figure at this planning level, week, resource, location, year on year offset. So now I'm just saving it. So now we write the actual attribute transformation. So now we have done the setup. We have the source key figure with us. We created a target key figure and we said target is always same as the source key figure. That's why I wrote the calculation here. The maintenance last year available at week resource location is always equal to Z maintenance final availability week clock resource. But when you are requesting the data and displaying the data, you get the data from week, re week resource location year on year offset. So now we'll go and write the calculation for this inside the attribute transformation. So if I click on start, so system asks for three things. What do you want to create? Is it a key figure or is it a helper key figure or it is an attribute transformation? So now I pick up the attribute transformation. System will display all the attributes that are there inside the planning area test config. So these are the, you know, the, the ones that we, uh, I mean, the attributes that are already available, pick an attribute and then uh, give a planning level at which this attribute has to be transformed and what is the level in this example that is weak resource location year on year offset so and then click on ok it opens up that attribute transformation thing so now we are doing a periodic transformation at a weak level so as a standard if if you if you take if you take a copy of sap ibp1 uh, this uh, these uh, transformations are already been written to accommodate the control tower reporting related key figures especially for the annual operating plans and year on year uh, revenue calculations etc so it was already been written so i can directly go to the period four that is at the week level so so you can see here the, 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 the stuff is already been written it's called week product location customer offset so if i check this input key figures system will show me um, um uh, the, the 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 key figures that were selected as an input for this transformation so now what is the logic that has been here period id means week at this offset level you do this calculation what is that calculation period id 4 plus 52 that means you're taking a period id and then you're transforming it to another 52 periods it's week 52 weeks one year so that's the logic just just give me one minute guys i'll just be back one minute Yeah, so this is the actual attribute transformation that 
the logic that we have to write. So I have other examples here. Mm. Yeah, you see. So now let's come back to the steps that we done. First is I copied the source planning level, created a new planning level, an offset planning level, so that my transformed values can be holded at this offset level. Second, I verified the source key figure. Fine. Third, I created a new key figure by copying the source key figure. And then uh, uh, at the base planning level, that is, I think, yeah, the, the base planning level, that is the uh, last year final availability base planning level is weak resource location. And at the base planning level, it is always equal to the source key figure, that is final available capacity at weak resource location. Uh, and but I changed the request level calculation at the new planning level that is a PL2 offset. So just like the way in, in, in the config that I have done at the request level, I am saying that uh, please system you read the values from the offset planning level. Okay, now I'm doing the attribute transformation fourth step. So create a new key figure and select attribute transformation option. Select any attribute ID at the planning level at the planning level to PL to offset. This is a key here. And then the calculations could be like this that period ID 4 is equal to period ID 4 plus 52. That means it takes a period ID and then sums it up with another 52 periods so that the result would be saved in the period ID 4. So this period ID 4 is used for the attribute transformation. Example if I pick up attribute transformation for location ID, if I write this calculation that if location ID is any underscore mill, if, if if that is any underscore mill transform it to SA underscore mill otherwise it is fine so now what happens is in that planning level that is offset planning level the any mill would be transformed with the SA underscore mill okay and then select the target key figure at the red PL1 as an input key figure so the target key figure in our case that is uh, the last year final level of last year capacity becomes the input so I'm not sure whether you guys uh, can completely process it, but maybe it takes uh, some time to it just we need to connect the dots and it just makes complete sense. Now I'm giving I want the transformation to happen on what attribute first period ID four that is a weak attribute in the time profile for what planning level you want to transform this for all all planning levels because period 84 has been used across 30 40 planning levels right because there are so many other key figures that are planned at weak level only like demand key figures are at weak um, another supply key figures so stock transfers and etc etc they all are at plan they, they are at weak i don't want to transform all those key figures you know i don't want to disturb everything but i just want to focus only on this particular planning level that is a weak resource location here on your offset because that is a key figure that i'm interested in that is my final availability has to be transformed to in here. That's why I'm picking up this planning level here. And what is the logic? So the logic is period 4 plus now we have to specify what is the input for this transformation. So to what uh, you know key figure I have to transform this. So for what key figure we have to transform this that is for the last year um, last year availability so i'll go into the inputs here i'll say last click on enter i'll have uh, everything in here i think this is a one uh, last year availability and select as input clicking on okay validating it it is saying that this is selected as input it's fine saving it okay that's it we just need to activate it and then uh, uh, make sure that the source key figure that is a final available capacity has some values in 2018 that would be transformed and displayed within a year offset I'll activate it, but before that, I also want to touch base on the versions here. Can I ask a yes. question here, please? Yes, sir, please. Uh, 
Yeah, this question may not be appropriate at this time. Maybe, uh, um, you know, in the world, in, you know, in IP, uh, the BPC and all, we have a copy function, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Is that the same as a old copy function by any chance? No, sir. This here we have another operator called copy operator that is copying values between the key figures. So, so but that copy is bucket by bucket. Yeah, that copy is add... mostly you know that copy is mostly from a version to the version or like you know, some characteristic values you will be changing it. Um, yeah, this uh, this is a key figure. So you. you we have a key figure A and now we are going into the key figure B. But yes. as you said, like, you know, when you want to compare in a graph or something, you know, compare, you know, my my point is like, you know, that, that both has to be in the same uh, planning, um, same planning level so that like, you know, in the graph you can compare uh, key figure A versus key figure B. So. Mm -hmm uh but here sir i mean uh, you can still compare uh, because the planning levels are still the same it is just a duplicate value so that we are creating so they are at the same level so even this uh, transformed value is also at location a resource and a week and then the source key figure that is final availability is also at you know the uh, week location and the resource so if i take this key figure one this is 111 12 So this is a source key figure. So now here we have another copy operator, just like the way snapshot operator. So here we have a copy operator in IBP. Um, so there, just click on run and pick up the operator that we want to do a copy and then run it. It copies. So there we have to specify, like in every other you know operator, there is an input, there is an output. Here the input is this key figure one. Output is key figure two. If I do a copy, system just simply does this thing and copies it here. And at max, what we can do is, if if we are in this, uh, uh, where are we? In, in in the May, if this is our time bucket, uh, I can say that you know, copy only from the uh, from the current time bucket. Then the copy will not do this. Copy will do this, or I can further offset it and say that okay, from next time bucket you do it, but not now. Third option, if the key figure is for brand one and brand two, and you can say that copy only brand one values. That option is there, uh, and uh, and what else? So so there are these kind of options between uh, copying the data between the key figures. But here, what we are talking is that I want to pick this, and I want to display it in here. So this is my okay. uh, not transformed. So this cannot be achieved through the standard uh, this thing. So, but these two key figures are at the same planning level as you're rightly mentioning. Uh, but just the the name is different. I gave a new name called offset. So, but if I can pick the last year and then put it in this current bucket, so now I can see that May 19, 143 is my available capacity. But last year it is 11. So yeah, and then I can also plot graphs and uh, see the variance and why where it is going, how it is changing, etc. Okay, so, <clears throat> so, yeah, thanks. So we'll cover, I mean, once I activate it and then we'll see how this actual thing is working in. But before that, I also want to touch base on the versions. So there is this called versions here on the last. So what options we have? First is start here, the name is overview. So here we have all the overview of the planning area. And also this is where we create the operators, copy operator, um, disaggregation operator, snapshot operators. We'll go there eventually. So we just have seen only snapshot operators. Then we have the master data elements. Under it, we have attributes, master data types, time profiles. And then comes to the actual planning. Here we have the planning area and details, planning levels, key figures, and then the versions. So we need to go to the versions here and specify you know uh, what versions it will have so so by default system automatically gives you two versions one is a downside version and is upside version so version is a different data set altogether uh, so it, it creates a separate database for one version so upside version is like kind of a best case scenario downside is like kind of a you know uh, 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 
not so best case scenario i would say like pessimistic approach and optimistic approach i would say uh, like example would be demand is uh, 120 uh, 120 is a demand for amazon customer for smartphone s12 optimistic scenarios that is upside version the demand can actually go to 200 the pessimistic approach it can actually go to uh, 55 so now this same key figure that is a consensus demand has a three different values uh, one for each version so 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 that's the thing so by default it comes up with the name called downside version an upside version so i'll go and i'll create this as version specific master data that means that this version can have uh, its own uh, you know um, um, master data Click on activation. Oh, it takes a lot of time. To, to show the logs while it is activating i also want to show you something else guys about the key figure you know calculations so the input key figures button if you guys have observed in the attribute transformations also so the input key figure button signifies that when we write a calculation expression so we'll specify that what is the input for this expression so system has the intelligence to read those key figures and it will say whether it is an uh, and what is the input for it so if i write a calculation like uh, um, you know something like c is equal to a uh, plus uh, okay let's go so a plus a plus b so if i activate it then system thinks system can read the key figure a and key figure b and we also specify the planning levels so system says that okay the input key figures for the c key figure c is a and b and system also says system also gives you two columns if you guys remember there that is selected as input and whether it's a stored or not if i say it is a stored then simple system goes if, if i say a is stored and b uh, is non-stored so system you say a is stored system goes back to the key figure a and identifies the values that are there in the database for key figure a and if you say b is not stored that means system thinks that key figure b has some calculation for example b is equal to x minus x minus y okay uh, so if you say that this is not stored then system thinks that okay there is no value for it in the database but you know get back into the system and identify uh, the calculation that's happening for x and y and takes the difference and then uh, brings the value in here for example here the x and y is here and it is uh, 50 and this is 10 okay and then the key figure a is uh, 100 so now uh, in this scenario what happens is 100 and b is 50 minus 10 that is 40 and then 100 plus 40 this becomes 140 
now what i'm trying to say is that this key figure b can also have a stored value so a key figure can have both a stored value and also a calculated value okay so i mean a classic example would be for example there is this calculated key figure okay and then there is this adjusted key figure system is doing all the calculation and giving the result in 100 and 200 and 300 so now what i'm writing the calculation logic is that i'll write the calculation logic like this adjusted key figure is equal to if is null what is null if adjusted is null then pick up the calculated key figure if it is not null then take the adjusted key figure that means adjusted key figure is having the highest priority so now i am saying here 111 and here i don't give anything then system does this I'll say 444 system takes this so now adjusted key figure has this key figure has uh, uh, you know two values one is a stored value another is a calculated value okay so now if I am writing another calculation that is like for example uh, revenue just some standard thing is revenue is equal to adjusted key figure into uh, unit price something like that and now if i say to the system that uh, you know uh, if, if i write this calculation and validate it system reads the calculation logic revenue is equal to adjusted key figure and unit price it first checks the planning levels are cool or not and the integrity has been followed or not whether the mathematical expression has been written rightly or not then system checks uh, that these two are the key figures that are being selected and system by default says that adjusted key figure it says that it's a stored value and if i take the stored value so the stored value for adjusted key figure is just this not this because these are not stored but the calculated value is this okay I'm not sure whether you guys have followed or not so in the revenue key figure when i'm using this key figure or registered key figure and then if i say that this is a calculated one then system picks these values and multiplies with them unit price and gives the values totally fine but if i mark them as stored values because you only store two values that is 111 and 444 and these two are coming from another key figure that is calculated based on the calculation logic that you wrote so uh, so this is uh, the thing so basically i mean th this we use when uh, 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 you know in the adjusted scenarios where you want to store a user entry if user entry is not there copy some other values and make sure that you propagate some values in that key figure if the user values are coming in that means planner is punching a value 111 and he has to click a button called save data remember that so if it is a calculated one it, it throws an error message saying like you cannot save the data into this key figure so uh, but when he's giving 111 and clicking on save data that means this data point will actually get saved inside the system so yeah this scenario comes in handy when uh, you know uh, when you know when when you want to honor the user entry and also uh, look for the calculation that's happening and you have to merge these two and obviously give high priority to the user adjustment because uh, the planner enters a value with his gut feel or with more insight into the into the actual uh, you know scenario and then so high priority goes to the adjustments but if there is no adjustment then yeah copy the values from the calculation and when you're reusing this key figure that is uh, the, the final key figure so then you can tell it to the system whether you have to pick the stored values or the adjusted values okay and i mean to say i mean conclusion takeaway is that a key figure can have uh, both stored and calculated click on stored checkbox that means system allocates a database into a table is there the data goes and actually sits in that particular table at that particular level 
if it is a calculated system always reads the other key figures the dependent key figures and gets it calculation from the dependent key figures so that's the whole ball game zone Activation is successful. Uh, let's get back to our test config. So now I'll first I'll maintain the you know uh, the the last year value so that it transforms and brings it up to the current level. Um, that is a weak resource, weak resource location. Uh, so this current week is what is the current week? This is 20, I think, right? Current week is 20. So I'll go to 2018-20. And uh, there is a calculation written for it. So final available capacity is um, okay. So I think it's a calculation happening from a maintenance job uh, level. So I think I need to go to the maintenance job. Yes, here, and I'll go to the 2018. So here I'll say uh, what is the maintenance job start period, capacity required by the job, and uh, I think these two are the ones I think, right? What is it? Key figure this final availability is a subtraction between the standard capacity and then the planned capacity consumption. I hope I'm bringing both the values. Yeah, I also have to bring the st standard capacities at resource location. Hmm, too many things to maintain. Hmm. Okay, great. Um, so give Maintaining till uh, some awesome. saving it. And I also need to maintain the standard capacity that is at a weak resource location so that I can actually bring out the values for final available capacity. So, what is the standard available capacity? Great. So I think these are the ones. So it's 168, 168, 168. <clears throat> Come here, I'll go here. I'll first I'll view the last year. is called last year um, capacity projections week 20 right week 20 so i'll just say final available
What's wrong? One second. First, let me do a refresh. I think this was long, long back open template. Once I do a refresh, then system establish the connection. Okay, so if I click on this, you can see the APM formatting and the data has been read from the back end. Now I'll go to the edit view. No, not maintenance job, it's a resource ID. Come on. I'll just open the final capacity after all the calculations that's happening. Okay, it is asking for a filter. Use some filter. I'm copying the filter across the Okay, something wrong is happening with this. So let me open a new template. I don't know, this is opened from yesterday, so I haven't done anything on this. Maybe this got corrupted. I'm opening a new template and I'm editing the template. I'll uh, bring up the values that we want in here. So this is a container planning. Uh, I'll change the name here. <clears throat> Last year, capacity projections, okay. Let me close this template. I'm not sure what went wrong with this. And once you're done with your planning, guys, just close the template. Uh, don't keep that idle for more time. Okay, uh, I maintain data from week 20 of uh, 2018, nothing on week 18. So, <clears throat> so, uh, so location, uh, mill, northwest, uh, resources, manual assembler, robotic assembler. These are the final available capacities after all the, you know, the, the settings that we made and I gave a random value. So the data is there till uh, week 40 of 2018. Okay, now I come here. This is the last year. So now this is from the current time bucket. This is week 2019. You can see here, this is week 2019. And I'll bring up the resource location, not the product, not the container. So standard capacity final available capacity and also the last year so we can see here 140 is 148 is last year value and 148 296 all these are last year values so if i change in here um, let me bring up those the actual calculation related ones maintenance job id and uh, the capacity required there is this key figure right um, which tells that how much um 
does a maintenance activity consumes the capacity so i give a very uh, less number that is uh, 20 that's why it is coming to 48 so i'll give 100 here i'll save it okay this is these are non editable okay fine i'll let's get back to the back end and then uh, save the values so i just want to show it to you guys that if i change the value at the past you know it will get changed in the future also that is our product uh, maintenance job and uh, go back to the 2018 and go to the edit mode pick up the key figure that you want to change so this is not 20 now what is this mill nw and then this is manual assembler okay so i'll change here 100 i'll change here 50 save so went into the back end ideally you know we shouldn't change the historical values i mean you guys know it so so i do a refresh so the capacity required by the job became 100 hours so the final availability became 68 hours so now if i come here so this 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 got changed okay this is a concept about um, about the attribute transformation in a nutshell we are picking up an attribute we are transforming it value it can be a location id pick a dc1 transform a key figure values for dc1 to dc2 so only thing remember is that this is on a key figure basis this is not on a system level change that's a key right so here what we did this is at a uh, capacity level we did and that is also at weak resource location so that level that planning level for one specific key figure system transforms the values and the transformed values will be displayed in another key figure so that's the whole concept in a nutshell and then there is a procedure that you guys have to follow um, this is in here and also if you go and type uh, sap IDP attribute transformation i mean you'll get a whole lot of you know uh, reading uh, material available a lot of blogs from uh, sap blog articles and uh, and stuff because this this future is kind of uh, you know it's 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 a really very really useful depending upon the scenario that we're talking in so now the next thing is the versions that we have configured all right so now if i go back here so so now let's let's talk about versions for now so i i again to the master data workbook you know opened two sheets one sheet is for master data mace version another sheet is for maintenance job version upside version okay so uh, this is a master data that we have maintained it has three attributes maintenance job id maintenance job technician name maintenance type so chemical cleaning dry vacuum services oiling pipe cleaning etc uh, related technician name and then the maintenance type so if i come to the upset version there is no data available in here so upset version there is no data so so now what i'm trying to say here is that you know i can uh, create a different set altogether in a in a different version and then uh, do different planning in a different version and can also come up with a different plan in a different version so when that thing is happening i can also have different master datas available i mean uh, configured in a different version so here uh, i just have uh, five jobs in the upset version i can have 10 jobs and i can have a key figure data for 10 different 10 different maintenance jobs and uh, my available capacity would be further down further down further low um, and also i can in another version i can just keep only three jobs and then come up with a different plan altogether okay 
but uh, but, but before this i think uh, let's let's deal the versions tomorrow but before that i want to show it to you guys uh, another thing that is the scenarios so let me open a scenario so i'll come here i'll break it as a 2019 itself come to the capacity planning So let me take off this capacity required. Now just keep it very, very simple. This is maintenance planning and that is capacity planning. So as a maintenance planner, I'm going and specifying <clears throat> when a maintenance activity has to happen. For that, I'm giving a one um saying that you know let's do a maintenance job in that particular time period for this particular combination and uh, this is resulting me some final available you know capacity uh key figure values in here so so now if so now let's say um So as a as a as a maintenance planner, so I can think of alternate plans. And every plan is a scenario. Now please don't you know uh, get confused with the versions and the scenarios. There is a dedicated slide also. Tomorrow, once we're done with it, I'll take you to the comparison between the scenario and version and simulate. Okay. So but now scenario is made by planner X and planner x can share the plan to planner y and planner z or maybe planner a b c across the team he can create multiple scenarios and he can share those multiple scenarios to multiple people so now i'm creating a scenario for that this is a scenario option here i'm creating one so i'm creating a scenario called <clears throat> um what is it? Uh, think of a name. Um, it's called uh, just saying meeting the targets, ma meeting the maintenance targets. So I can share it with the, the, the people that are there, but as of now, I don't want to share it with anyone. Ideally, I should pick a particular planner and then click on his name so that this scenario actually gets into uh, his system. So, so now let's see what happens. System creates another column and specifies the scenario name there. Okay, this is a scenario. You see this column, column J? It has a call. Uh, this thing name as a scenario. This that is a meeting the targets and I also want to create another scenario that means um, meeting the targets uh, it is uh, um, less jobs less maintenance 
like let's say postponing the postponing the targets postponing the maintenance targets okay creating a new scenario now so in the postpone new scenarios i'll not keep i'll not run any job so just keep it very very simple um see and also i'm just clicking on save data and this data is uh, saved only for this scenario not on the database i'm opening other sheet uh, it, it will automatically open me the uh, postponing the targets let me take off the standard available capacity it is showing 168 168 across so now here on the top the first thing is the scenarios if i click on this system lists me all the scenarios that are already there so there are five uh, uh, baseline is the base base version i mean um, a base data that is there on the database so if anyone is if, if the integration is happening or if anyone is reading uh, um, you know this data on an excel sheet or plotting a chart the data would be picked up from the base version which is saved in the database but these are the ad hoc ones high safety stock lower safety stocks meeting the targets postponing the targets so i'll click on both and also the baseline so now system would show me for that one particular key figure that is final available capacity can have three values so if i meet um, i think everyone is as everything is having the same but fine if meeting the targets if i meet all the targets my available capacity is 113 if i postpone the targets my available capacity is 168 and the baseline is anyway you know 168 so and i can i can create multiple scenarios again and then uh, a, a scenario is kind of an ad hoc one and it has a separate data in it and then i can share this scenario to a particular user so now if i come back here manage i click on the manage there are two options create a scenario manage a scenario click on this manage see there are uh, th these are our stuff meeting the targets um, created by me on this time date postponing the targets descriptions i can share it with click here and then pick a guy and then share it with him so as a planner i did this and i shared it to my manager so in real time scenario this, this should happen so i should come up with another scenario meeting the targets postponing the targets and uh, xyz xyz so i'll give it to the my manager and the manager will compare so what would be my final capacity with respect to all these scenarios so which one i should pick up and obviously this is a consensusization he'll talk with other people and then he'll say that okay now i have these many scenarios and then you know uh, let me know which with which scenario we should go around so ideally this is not this i mean like if if, if you go with supply planning so that would be a classic example supply planning as i'm um, think men mentioned the same in the last sessions so the supply plan right it gives you to so many results it gives you the production plan it gives you the stock transport plan it gives a purchasing plan etc etc so uh, you're unable to meet the demand there are shortages because you don't have enough capacity or you know etc etc you can create one scenario as a supply planner a scenario one is external procurement and change some values save it run the optimizer you will get a different plan that plan can have different costs that you incur if you do external procurement you incur xyz cost second scenario i will not go for external procurement but i'll go for an extra maintenance shift not maintenance i mean extra uh, uh, shift in the production facility so if, if if i do overtime i still meet the demand but i'll incur some other costs maybe transportation is high uh, because i'm producing more in plant one and i have to ship more uh, from plant one so i need more trucks or etc etc but if it is external manufacturing maybe the logistics has been taken care of by the other you know uh, uh, the you know, co-packer or you know co-manufacturer or uh, the vendor he can directly ship in the stuff to the connected warehouse etc etc I can get multiple versions and every version will have a different data set altogether different results 
so here there is only one result that is final available capacity that's why you know it, it might not make complete sense but let's say if there are other key figures also and i three data points three outputs three kpis in such a way like key performance indicators for the capacity planning so you will have uh, the three sets three key figure data points for every scenario and pick up the one that is most uh, you know optimal for your organization to go on so i'll click on you know, manage now i'll promote the meeting the targets so i'll go with this scenario for so i'll say that meeting the targets i'll go with this and i'll say i'll promote it so because i mean right now i am becoming the manager and also i am the planner so ideally the planner has to create a scenario and show it to his higher level authorities the higher level authorities will pick a call take a call that okay i'm promoting this so i'll say apply changes i'll do a refresh now so now the base became the meeting the targets meeting the targets is 158 here the base became 158 because the base version uh, the, the baseline is the base so that is where the actual data gets saved and that is the thing that connects to other systems also and uh, to like if, if if for example if this is a capacity supply key figure now uh, that's the one that you know connected to uh, 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 optimizer run so if uh, when i run it in the baseline so system reads the data from baseline okay so now you need to promote it then the scenario plan would get saved onto the baseline again like if i promote the postponed targets let's say i thought like okay now now let's not get with the meeting the target scenario let's continue with the postponing the targets so let's make our plan as postponing the targets so in here it becomes baseline becomes 68 168 I'm saying postponing the targets postponing the maintenance targets apply changes so this became postman targets became 168 everything it's copied into 168 so so this is how we play with the scenarios guys so and then i can also go to the manage and i can delete all so so another advanced future is i think So this came in recently, I think just um, two releases back, I think three, four releases back, I think. So uh, what I'm trying to say is here, like you can plot a chart for a scenario also. Like, I mean, you can plot the charts for different scenarios and you can view the data. Like this key figure, final available capacity, you can view it for multiple scenarios. You see here, versions or scenarios. So, okay i'll pick up the i should pick up the my planning area test config now system reads the versions that are already created so if i click on this system reads the versions that were see uh, meeting the targets post one of the targets and also if you guys have seen it pro observe it here these scenarios are made inside the version called base version and not the upside version so now version is a different thing altogether version is a different you know it's 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 a database it's not an, it's not an ad hoc thing so inside the base version i'm creating these ad hoc scenarios that is meeting the targets postponing the targets now i can plot my charts just for these you know uh, scenarios and can uh, view the data so some theory got it This is a key line. Manage alternate plans. They can be defined using all a subset of the key figures of the planning area, including calculated key figures, right? Because for example, in here, the final available capacity is a calculated one. So I'm changing my job start period, I'm making it one or a zero, and that is actually resulting my final availability. 
right so i change that the calculation changes so now i can make the calculation key figures also as a scenario versions can contain references to base version so versions is a okay i think yeah i'm sorry i think we should be in the creating scenarios and guys uh, the thing is that scenario and versions both go hand in hand uh, but there are few changes so the, but the concept is same that both will have two different plans multiple plans but scenario is an ad hoc one but ad hoc version is a configuration required so you need to go and create a configuration for it and uh, population is when we when you create it or save it while you're doing it on excel sheet and then master data changes no you cannot have different master data here for example in this scenario uh, meeting the targets you are creating a scenario based on the master data that is already available under the base version you cannot actually create another new maintenance job chemical cleaning and for example h2 work cleaning um, something like that so you cannot actually create a maintenance job for this only scenario like uh, meeting the targets and then you cannot have a, a, that detailed level of planning that if i do five more maintenance jobs five new maintenance jobs what would be my final available capacity not possible why because to actually create five new jobs you have to actually disturb the master data that cannot happen with the scenario scenario is always with based on the existing key figures and based on the existing key figures you tweak the data and you come up with alternate plans purpose is on the fly what if scenarios so that is a whole thing so th this is an on the fly so you open a scenario and on the fly you do it and then after a couple of days you are actually closing that scenario and that scenario will be gone i mean it, it is it is you know uh, it will not be there in the database and then also it is being made by a planner and then it would be saved uh, it would be shared to another planner but it, this is this will not actually uh, you know um, be in the system that means if if you also have access to test config if you open the planning area if you log into test config you will never ever see a scenario called meeting the targets there is no such thing for you that there is another plan alternative plan called meeting the targets it was designed by me and if i share it to you you will have the access to see that alternate plan but whereas versions is different because versions is a configurable one it is there inside of the planning area called test config so if it is a configurable element it is available to everyone just like the way the alerts if you remember web based alerts they are custom alerts made by one end user if he shares it to another user he will see it otherwise the alerts are uh, meant for him and for his purposes only he will create an alert he will play with it and then if he if he shares it if he subscribe another user also to that alert he'll see it but whereas with the alert key figures that's an configurable element it is there as a separate key figure as a separate configurable element and it is available for all the planners who can access that planning area uh, it is shareable yes that's a, that's another you know th this is a key you know you can share it and you can create a lot of what if scenarios and then you share it with the entire team like once in a week if you're having a, a capacity meeting you create these versions and then prepare your do your homework and then go to the meeting and show all these uh, multiple plans and then let the team decide on uh, what uh, plan that is what scenario we should promote or what scenario we should stick to so created by planner or end user dynamically when using the system so and remember these are all the end user uh, related ones so you now we have to train the user that this is how you create a scenario and then they'll do it in the real time world but whereas version is configuration required and we'll see this tomorrow and uh, yeah when you simulate changes you can save the simulation as a scenario by choosing a create in the scenarios group the simulation data is not written permanently to the database first one it is not visible to anyone else second unless you share the scenario three so they are ad hoc not saved on the database only visible to you and also you can share it with to to the others you can display the li a list of your scenario or change the settings for scenario by choosing manage in the scenarios group so you, in the excel sheet you see this scenarios two options create and manage for each scenario you can change the header data and you can define whether the scenario is to be reset 
the data is erased but the scenario is kept promoted the data is saved permanently to the database and the scenario is reset deleted or duplicated so these options that you can get if you click on manage okay um, so that's all guys that's all for uh, today to so tomorrow we'll uh, continue with the versions and uh, other stuff so so just a recap so what we have done today um, we have spent a lot of time understanding the attribute transformations i want it to be for more time so that you guys can completely digest this um, the entire we we did the entire config you know step by step procedure how to deal with this so in a nutshell there is one source key figure there is a target key figure target key figure will have a transformed values how the transformation has to happen you have to write the logic for it and you have to create two planning levels so that you can accommodate the source data and then also the transformed one second we talked about a key figure you can have both stored and calculated values and when you are reusing this key figure one for key figure two is equal to key figure one into 1.5 let's say if this is what you want to write and you can tell it to the system that key figure one you pick either the stored value or a calculated value what else we have seen we have uh, uh, seen the the versions not sorry scenarios and then uh, how to you know play with the scenarios create a scenario share it with the users and and can view the multiple scenarios and compare them um, like side by side and, uh, and also promote them or share it with other uh, you know other user and also uh, that scenario is available from the front end the planners can also go and uh, see the multiple if if that planner has created it so any doubts guys Moving. <clears throat> great then uh, please recap this guys um attribute transformation is really very handy but the other things that i'm uh, that i mentioned here like you know product substitution realignment we have those that 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 the functionality is there as a standard under the demand planning we'll see them once we start with our demand planning thing so after we do the statistical forecasting we can create a new product introduction phase in phase out man the realignment thing so we can do it like you know properly as a you know as a conf uh, you know as a um, as a process we'll do that but but we can we can still use this attribute transformation and this is just to highlight the possibilities of you know transforming a particular attribute value for a particular key figure and then you know you know do do the planning so to to highlight the possibilities i have listed this year but uh, usually what people uh, use this for attribute transformation is just for you know uh, year on year comparisons for the period shifts take the last month's data push it to the you know um, uh, new month and then uh, you know that, that's how we, uh, you play with it okay thanks guys uh, tomorrow we'll catch up again hmm? And and one sorry guys I mean tomorrow there will not be any session because I'm having a personal emergency I have to travel so tomorrow there will not be any session but day after tomorrow we can uh, catch up okay sorry for that sorry for the late last minute notice uh, but just just an emergency just popped up yesterday night my time so tomorrow there will not be any session a uh, day after tomorrow we'll catch up okay but I would uh, suggest you guys that you know whatever time that we are spending uh, this one and a half hour 90 minutes or 100 minutes uh, please dedicate this and go back and visit the previous sessions and then uh, down I mean uh, you know pick a session and then uh, go through it and then you know, try to digest it more okay thanks guys thanks for joining bye bye okay.